That right there, folks, is the sound of Enigma. And they specialize in sort of what you would call the paranormal music in the New Age world. One of my favorite New Age groups. And tonight, we will have a goddess. And she is a real live medium. And she sees the people after they leave their bodies. This is Brother Sir Kim coming at you from the heart of North Philadelphia. Give a shout out to Sign of the TV. Because he is the man who inspired me to do what I do. Now, without further ado, I see the goddess in the house, and I'm going to invite her in, and we're going to get this thing started. There you go. For that little piece to come up. Oh, I'm glad it ain't another one of those nights. Peace. Peace. Oh, there we go. Let me get right in the camera. I'm nervous. Sorry, I forgot I hit the comment first. <laughs> oh, hey, no way there's nothing to be nervous about. Um, <laughs> I got some people in the house. This little eye thing right here always says one or two. But when I click it off, it shows all these people that was checking it out. So I'm not sure how that works. But I but I know um I know brother uh, Joe is in the house and um he's a real good brother. He don't play around. <laughs> um, I thank him for introducing us. Hi Joey. And um, you know, the first thing I want to do is start off by asking you the question that I ask everybody. And what made you wake up one morning? and say, wait a minute, I can do this. I, I'm a medium. I can actually see these people. Like, like, what made you realize this? I don't think that it was a matter of waking up one morning and realizing it. I think it was my experiences over, I want to say a good 15 years. And after that, um, I, I realized that what I was seeing was actual events from these people's lives at this time it was my loved ones but um it was things that i shouldn't have known hmm. so that's pretty good yeah. <laughs> i mean um, i don't know how deep you want me to go i kind of want yeah. to get well, to I, mean, I mean i mean it, you know just do you um <laughs> um i want to ask you um do do you ever see or feel the energy of any of our ancestors like Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Noble Drew Ali, even, even anybody from maybe the, the Egyptian days or anything like that? Um, for me, I haven't felt anyone like well known. Um, I don't really, but that's, that, is, that suits my personality. Um, my focus is more on helping, like, the people that are around me, and I feel like the best way to do that is through our bloodlines, because I feel like that's part of my mission being here is um, helping people to understand genetics and what DNA is about on a spiritual level, um, the, like, you know, genetic codes and things like that, and how you want to look at certain pat patterns in your family and your lineage to kind of figure out what your purpose is here. Because we're here to 
I say break generational curses um, so that people can kind of understand what I mean, but it goes a lot deeper than that. Yeah, well, you it's know, all about reaching Nirvana. <laughs> okay, Nirvana, man. Uh, yeah. Can you explain a little bit of that? So I'm very eclectic. I am the type of person I like know a, a little bit about a lot. So um, I study Buddhism briefly, and they believe that their ultimate goal, like a Christian's ultimate goal, is to go to heaven to be with God. And Buddhists believe something similar. But they believe that you reach nirvana, and that's when you have no ego, you have no separation from God. You go in back into the Most High, and that's that. Mm -hmm. So, and I believe uh, that's what it's all about. Okay. Uh, um, if, if there was any anybody, any um ancestor, or any anybody that you were energy you would like to feel, actually sit down and talk to, and find out about, like, who would it be and why? I would have to say it would be my great great grandmother so my grandmother's grandmother and that's because um, I feel like I don't really know how to explain it but I feel like um, I do believe in reincarnation and I feel like the new energies that come in they're a mix of different ancestors and for me me and her life lives are very similar um, I remember being about, I want to say 19, and I was just having a co candid conversation with my mom because she's always been the type of mom to, like, listen to me, and it was very important while I was figuring these things out, and my mom is spiritual, too, and I said, I remember great-great-grandma because we was at Pine Street, and she took her leg off, and she put it on top of the refrigerator, mm. and she wore these kind of glasses. She was, like, this tall. She, you know, this built. And my mom was like looking at me and she said they wanted to take my, my great my great great grandmother's leg. She didn't want them to take it. But eventually they had to, but she died in the hospital and I was two mm. months old. Mm. Yeah. So um over the years it's just been like with my family, I've always been the one to like plan the funerals. And I'm like one of the younger ones in the family. I was always the one, um, when people passed, it was just like, I just jumped in. It just felt natural to, like, do certain things. Um, and my grandmother, me and her were very, very close. She passed in August 2015. And um, it's a whole lot that goes into her story. But basically, my aunts were telling me, like, they were welcoming her into heaven. And I knew my grandma was going to die soon. And this was, like, before anybody knew she was sick or anything. And my aunt kept saying, you're going to give her her death rights. You're going to give her her death rights. And I'm like, like, I didn't know what the ancestors were talking about. And lo and behold, the night my grandma became unresponsive, my mom called me. She told me to come there. And it was like a ritual. That's the best way I can say it, the way everything went. It's like I cleaned my grandma up as far as, you know, doing her makeup and the things like she would have done. And was like just cleaning the house, and you know I thank the Most High for her life, and I talked to my grandma while she was passing. She was unresponsive, but you could literally feel her hands and her feet going cold, and I was like letting her know, like grandma, let go, because she was still breathing, and um, she did. And once she started coming to me, it was just like it's on a whole nother level now. <laughs> yeah. Man, what about, um, how about outside your family? Yes, so people outside of my family, how I first knew I was a medium, um, I had a best friend since we were six years old, and she had a lot of brothers, and her older brother, he was four years older than me, he had asked me to braid his hair one day, I saw him, you know, in the neighborhood, he was like, Blaine, can you braid my hair tomorrow? I said, yeah, what time? He said, 8.30. I said, okay. The next day, I was calling him. He wasn't answering the phone. So I turned my phone off. His sister called me 12 o'clock that night and told me he had been murdered. And he was pronounced dead at 8.30. So I'm like, wow. So throughout that process, he, um, one night, I, I started sleeping with my, in my mom's room again because I was just like, that was a major shock to my system, experiencing something like that. And I remember waking up literally crying. And my mom was like, what's wrong? And simultaneously, his aunt is calling me. And I had just had this dream. It was about a week before his funeral. 
where um, I had to tell him that he passed and I didn't know how to tell him. So I went to go get a, a, his obituary to show him. And when I came back, it was a young woman standing there. And when we were at the funeral, his sister, me and his sister were talking and the girl walked in the bathroom. And I'm like, that's the girl from the dream. And it, that's how it started off with Chris. Um, but Just keep talking. Over, over time, he um, kept coming to me with like different dreams. And I would tell his mom and it would actually be like childhood memories and things like that. That was my first experience with um, yeah. reading someone outside of my family. As I was still learning about my gifts, I'll never forget. It was a young lady. We were sitting outside. It was one of my friends, um, her neighbor. We were all just sitting outside one summer night talking, and out of nowhere, I just saw this. It looked like a little boy to me, like a, a teenage boy. And I started telling, like, describing what the person looked like to her. And she said that it was her sister, and her sister was a lesbian or whatever, and that was basically her. And I just told her that she, I forget exactly right now what the messages were, because a lot of times I read people. It's not for me to remember. It's for that person to get the message. So I told her whatever her sister had to say to her. And it was basically that. Like I, But I described exactly what she looked like. There was another time where I was sitting outside again with some of my friends that I actually grew up with. So I was more comfortable because I get really nervous when I do this type of um, work because I'm actually feeling so many energies. Um, so it can tend to be a lot. But we were sitting outside and... and the young the guy that I grew up with, his girlfriend was out there and I looked at her and I said, Your uncle was standing here. Like this was one of the best readings I ever did as far as mediumship. I was like, Your uncle was standing right here. And she was like, uh, my uncle and I'm like, Yeah, he's brown skin, he has like real thick hair, he has corn rules and he got shot in his chest because I see a white shirt with like blood all around his chest area. And she was looking, she was looking so confused. And I said, okay, he said his name is Mikkel. She said, oh, my God, that's my cousin, but he was like an uncle to me. And then she began to tell me about him, and then I began to tell her and give her advice about situations that were going on in her life. So at that point, that was maybe four years ago, I knew that I was really hearing from the other side. It was like, it just was confirmation over years and years and years. I, I mean, I have stories for days as far as this stuff, like she Chris knocked me. on the door. Say that again. No, uh, uh, no, I didn't say nothing. Go ahead. Uh, Chris knocked on the door before, and I have witnesses for all of this stuff, so it's like, it'll be cool if we do like another interview and I maybe can have his aunt with me, because she experienced a lot of this stuff with me. Mm. Um, at my great-grandmother's house, after she passed, me and my friend were over there, and we birth both heard my grandmom call me. And I didn't say anything because I thought I was tripping. And my girlfriend looked at me and she said, who was that? Because she knows nobody else was in the house with us. Hmm. Yeah, man. I, I, I was um, I was wondering, um, man, that, that, that was good, man. I like to hear, you know, some more stories, especially, yeah, you might, we got to do another one, uh, <laughs> was, you know, so y'all can bust it up. Uh, um, <laughs> but I, I, was, I was wondering, um, outside of your family, who else? Who would you? Who else would you like to meet and get to know, so they can actually like, oh, okay. like, like they they can tell you things out of the past that actually happened. And anybody else trying to figure out? Not too many. <laughs> I would have to say if there was anyone, 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 um, I would probably say all set. And that's only because she represents the divine feminine. And as a goddess, I would want to know, like, how she did what she did. Because mm. that's a part of my mission. The Most High is telling me, you know, as a woman, there's just certain things you do and there's certain things you don't do. And um, you have to kind of know where to pull from and what to do. And I'm surely in the mm. process of learning. I haven't mastered it. But I would just like to know, you know, how she did what she did. What made her love him so much that she went, you know, and put mm -hmm. him back together again? Because that's mm -hmm. really what we have to do now with our men. And it's yeah. really just all about family. Yeah. Yeah. We need <laughs> man, woman, and child. We need some help, babe. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 
Man, I, I, was, I was having a discussion today. You said something that kind of caught me. Um, I was having a discussion with a friend of mine, and he was we was talking about flat earth, but but we <laughs> got into spirit and soul. So mm -hmm. dealing with uh, feeling energies, are you? But would you say that you're feeling the soul, or would you say they're feeling the spirit energy? Or, or, I would or say spirit energy. energy. Okay. I would say spirit energy because you asking in that context, to me, I feel like your soul is like your core essence. But I feel like your spirit is the part of your soul that still have an ego attached to them. If you get what I'm saying. Like, yeah. because when I deal with my ancestors and I feel like because I'm a baby and I'm still learning this stuff, like I'm learning everything through experience. I feel like um, they are giving me I just got a brain freeze. I'm still nervous, <laughs> but I feel like what was what was I just saying? Can you refresh my memory? Um, um, and we were talking about the spirit and the soul with the difference, right? Something okay. like that. So I feel like dealing with them. Hello. Is it frozen? I think half the screen froze. How come my side is not frozen? Hmm. Oh, goodness. Something's always up. That's crazy. That's crazy. Something's always happening. Like the whole side just froze. I didn't get what she said. She just texted me something. It's adding. Sorry about that. My phone died while it was on the charger. It wasn't all the way plugged in. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. But um, the difference between spirit and soul. I deal with the energies that I deal with as far as my family, because that's the only, I have a comparison against how they were on this side and how they are on the other side. They're different. They're not the same. They're like more mature. They are, because the way the most High explained it to me was like in Christianity, we were taught that the angels are our help me. They're here to make sure we accomplish our mission. But in my reality and my experiences, that has been what the ancestors do. They tell you when to go left. They tell you when to go right. When you're looking for answers for things, they provide them for you in different ways. So I would say that that's all spirit because your soul is what I believe the most high is just consciousness, being aware. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, something I wanted to um, ask you. Um, um, when, when you say the most high, what exactly do you mean? Okay. The most high to me is like, I don't even really know how to explain the most high. The best way I can explain the most high is through what it tells me. 
which is basically like before nothing existed and while everything existed, it was this one being that is creator of all things. It is not masculine. It is not feminine. When it decided to create and split itself, just like an atom splitting for the first time, you got male and female. And then that's when polarity was born and, you know, our realities were created. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but there's a lot of concepts to it. I know I have a um, I mean, this a couple, is just for what I've I, told. I, yeah. Hope the phone didn't die again. The phone died again? <laughs> it seemed like ever since that happened. Mm. Maybe the phone not all the way in. Gotta check that connection. All right, maybe the phone, maybe the phone wasn't all the way in. I'm gonna try it again. I just keep tapping it until something happens. I don't think it can be her side every time. Maybe something, maybe something that I'm not doing. If you can hear me text something, or I don't know. All right, it says adding. Like, if my phone cuts off again, I'm gonna just take that as a sign that I'm I'm rambling and I'm talking too much. <laughs> okay, I should be good now. I had the wrong charger base, so one day doesn't work. So I had to oh, look at the right yeah, one. It wasn't compatible with the phone? Yeah, it's not the original that came with the charger. Yeah, because I do that all the time. And if, if the charge is in and the battery percentage is going down instead of up, and I'm like, what is going on here? Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. But, um, what, what you were saying, um, what was you saying at the last? Um, oh, um, the most high. Yeah, that was yeah. my theory of what the most high is. Oh, okay. Cause, because I always I always thought of the most high of a more feminine type thing. And a lot of men get mad, especially the men around here that um that call themselves uh Muslim really like like really get kind of ticked off <laughs> when I say um sometimes I just come right out and be like, uh, I think your god is, is a female. And they really get hot. <laughs> but but I, I just have a story about that. I do that. Sometimes I, I just do that because some of them come off, you know, you better believe in my God or else. And I Most like, religious oh. people do. Yeah, I, I say, well, um, I, I, I was just telling somebody today. I mean, this is kind of off the subject, but, I, but real quick, I was just telling somebody today. Um, they were talking about how God and up in the sky and created them and everything like that. I said, all right, that's all good. That's all good. That's what you want to believe. But um, but I have to see them. So if, if it is it possible you can show me your creator? Because I can show you my creator. And that's like, that's my mom. Because the etymology of the word create is to grow. And like, didn't you grow inside her? And he's like, uh, 
Yeah, or did she allow you to come into this world, have your first breath? I mean, we know this guy in the shadow of a doubt. And he's like, okay, all right, yeah, but, and I said, all right, we know that. Now all you got to do is show me yours. <laughs> right. <laughs> right there. But, but, but back on the subject. Um, mm -hmm. No, I, I actually yeah. agree with you 100%. I had a wake up call when I was 19. I had started, I always was a dreamer. Started having these crazy dreams. They started happening in real life. Was yeah. learning about sun gazing, started studying in chemist, herbal healing. That's another different thing. Things. But then I went back to Christianity. And when I was coming out of their religion the second time, I was a little older. So I asked the most high one day. I said, okay. This is once I knew the ancestors were talking to me. Like, now I'm interacting with other people's deceased loved ones. And I said, okay. Christianity puts this emphasis on blood. Hmm. But my mother shed blood so that I may have life. Like, these are the, this is how spirit started talking to me. It was like, Christianity teaches that the Godhead is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hmm. Okay, in reality, we see man, woman, and child. So why is there, like, a negation of the female principle? Three dudes. So, <laughs> hey, three like, dudes. Three dudes. <laughs> like, that does sound like... No, two, two dudes and an unknown. yeah. <laughs> Because they, they put the code right in front of you. It's two dudes and then it's the X. Like, what's the X? That's the woman. Okay. Because I am filled with what they quote unquote call the Holy Spirit. Like, I'm a very spiritual person. So when I was in Christianity, I asked the Most High, like, if this is real, I need to experience it. Because I see other people doing it, but I've never experienced it for myself. And it started with me speaking in a different language. And then it started with me doing what people would term halal praise, which is when it's like full possession of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So I do believe in that spirit. I don't necessarily know what that spirit is, but I do believe that it is a fem feminine principle because I was meditating that day and I asked the most high, what do I call you? Because I know it has to be a mother principle to God. If there's a father principle, there has to be a mother principle. And I heard Allah, clear as day. And then when I began to, to begin to look into Islam, they follow the moon cycles, and we know the moon is a feminine planet or whatever it is. We know it's supposed to represent femininity. So, you know, I just kind of took some things from there, and I looked at the fact that the women do cover, which is good because we need a covering out in the world. Because this is really, in my opinion, this is hell. This is where you have to work off your karma. Hmm. I never, um, I mean, I mean, like, women, you know, would cover themselves when it comes to Islam or whatever, but um, I never really look like, I never really like for the woman to cover her beauty. I mean, like, like you, you're a beautiful girl, like, can be rock, walking down the street all wrapped up and everything, and, 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 and then, and then I, I could walk down the street like this. I could walk down the street like this with my cool T-shirt on and my Nikes and everything, and 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 all the and now all everybody sees your eyeball. Like I don't think that's right. Like now, I'm not saying that they have to put a veil over their face or anything, but from a spiritual perspective and my experience as a woman, and and I do wrap my head and I do you know I don't necessarily mm -hmm. cover in that way, but I cover in my way. And there is a difference in the energy that you attract because as a an, as an attractive person, when you're walking down the street, people are gawking at you. Uh -huh. And it's like, even as more so as a woman, you don't want that type of attention because that's how you're putting off the wrong signal. It's nothing wrong with being sexy, but you don't have to be revealing. You can be mm -hmm. just as sexy covered up. Now, all of that with the eyes and all of that, I don't necessarily agree with that. Because that was yeah. because they were living where there was a lot of sand, and that was where sandstorms. Man, it, it's it's a it's what like seven point. Last time I counted, it it was like seven point two billion people on the planet. The it's so many mindsets on this planet, mm -hmm. and there are actually men out there that be like, if when you all covered up, hmm, I wonder what she looked like under that. And now they plotting to try to grab you somewhere and find out. I mean, it's a, it's some crazy people. It's either way. It's, it's yeah. really either way. 
you're absolutely right. But from my experience, I attract a different type of energy when yeah. I am covered. Because I'm right. married, so I don't give people, a, they don't get my attention anyway. But it's like, it's a difference in how guys will approach me when I'm dressed a certain way. Do you think that's from your energy of being able to connect with the, um, with, with the, uh, you know, the, um, this, this, what we call spirit world, as opposed to somebody who cannot? Um, I will answer that question by saying I've always been different. I've always been the girl who didn't want the attention but got all the attention, and I've always felt out of place. And I really had to work through a lot of anxiety and build up my confidence to um, be this way. So I don't know if it's necessarily from the energy and what I'm able to do, but that is possible. I just know that it's something that I'm just a people person. People are gravitated towards me. It's not just like an attraction thing. It's just people, period. So that, that, that pretty much answered my next question because I was going to ask you, so would you say that only mediums should cover up? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that, but I would definitely recommend if you do readings, because I do readings, that you definitely should cover your head because your head is your crown. You don't want mm -hmm. certain things getting in, and that covering is just a physical um, reminder that you want that protection. Right. How you doing, Aunt Cheryl? That's my Aunt Cheryl watching. And, Hi, uh, Aunt Cheryl. I have an aunt named Cheryl, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, now, um, what I want to ask you, too, about, because you mentioned er earlier about herbals, the herbs and everything, like, um, what is your diet? My diet is not what it should be. <laughs> Put it that way. I do eat meat, but I don't eat red meat. So I only, I stick to chicken, fish, and turkey. Um, I do eat a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. I do drink plenty of water. Mm. But um, I have a thing for, like, Doritos. Like, it's certain snacks that I like. And uh -huh. I do still, like, eat chicken wings from the Chinese store. Yeah, so do, <laughs> do, you think it, do you think of a certain diet that you would have to, like, get down with when you're ready to do, like, a real serious reading? And, and like, a cleansing. Like, how do you cleanse yourself and things, you know? Right. So I went through a consecration before. And even though I'm young, like I'm 28, um, I've been through this process before, but I know that it's a new level now because back then I didn't even really know who I was. But during that time, there was no meat. It was no dairy. It was no processed food. And I was mm -hmm. actually on the herbal regimen with the homeopathic healer that, I'm, um, that I study under. Shout out to Divine Mother, y'all. 110 South 52nd Street for all your natural healthcare needs hmm. but um at that time, I, I saw some dramatic changes in my health and my energy just overall okay it, it, that, that's a store or something 50 oh, yeah. seconds <laughs> yes yes um, her name is I call her divine mother her name is Miss Miriam she is in her 70s if you guys go on YouTube you can search body talk and she has like an introduction video and then she actually has a video with one of her like teaching sessions. Mm -hmm. But um, I have personal experience with her that was phenomenal. She's been in the business for, I want to say over 40 years. Um, really good lady. I recommend mm -hmm. her definitely highly. Yeah, I've probably seen it because I'm all over the place and I'm like, every once in a while I'm out, you know, out, out 50 seconds because actually um, 50 seconds around the 52nd Street, 60th Street, you know, is where everything went down with you and my heart. Uh, you know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and sometimes I go out there, but I, like I said, I, I don't know where the house is. The house is, the address of the house is online in the court case, but nobody knows where the house is. I went to City Hall and put the address in, and they don't know where it's at. I stood out there and asked the mail lady, do you know where this address that she didn't know where it was? That's crazy. Uh, um, but, uh, well, I will say, I definitely know that I connected with her because um, you invited me to her page recently and I was scrolling through it earlier today and I saw that you said she was light-skinned. And when I saw her, that's what I saw. She had, you know, I described her too. But um, she kept saying to me that she was bludgeoned. 
So when I read what I read, it was like, okay, this is not matching up. Maybe this happened before or something. But And I know when I'm hearing from the ancestors because they use words like that, that I know, but that are not in my everyday vocabulary. So the timing is not right for their reading right now, which is why it hasn't happened. But mm -hmm. when it happens, you won't be disappointed. That's all I can say. You guys can check my reviews out on Blue mm -hmm. Flame Fusion Communion. I don't have access to that page right now because I don't have access to that Facebook account anymore. But you guys know how to find me. So, hey, are you are you feeling anything right now, or or like like is is, is this somebody like behind you on the camera like waving it, and we can't see? Us? <laughs> you know, I'm just joking. But but is it any kind of energy you feeling now? Right now, I'm not really feeling any energies, and that's simply because I'm, like, extremely nervous. Like, like I said, when I'm dealing in these types of things, I have a lot of anxiety. So being as though I'm on, like, a live, I don't really know who's watching, I'm talking about, this is, like, intimate to me, you know. When I wanted to come out with this, my mom was very cautious. She's like, you know, she didn't really want people to scrutinize me or ostracize me. And for the most part, I can say that really hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. I do realize that a few people are scared of me. I do realize that a few people don't believe in what I do. Uh -huh. And I do want to mention, now that this came up, I do, I would like to mention it. I have had readings with people where they're like, no, that's not accurate. That's, that's just not true. And then somebody will recommend them to me. And they'll be like, you know, how did the reading go? And I'll tell them something general that as their friend, I know you would know. And they'll be like, yes, that is true. And then they'll tell me what's going on. And it's like, why would this person lie? So I realized that when I have readings where it's not a flow to it, then I know that that person is a skeptic and they don't believe and they're blocking the energy off because I'm not like this magical person that can just pick up on anybody's energy. It's like, if you ask me to read you, I'm reading what's in your energy field. I'm mm -hmm. reading what your loved ones are sending through you, but I'm just able to decipher it with the messages that I see. So mm -hmm. it's like if you're being closed off, I'm not going to be able to give you 100% accurate reading. Mm -hmm. Because I've had times where the person is open and the reading is six hours long because mm -hmm. the ancestor that's coming through for her is just giving more and more and more and more and more and more information to the point now where my ancestors are like, tell her she has your abilities and she needs to read you now. And I tell her and she picks up on my grandfather and tells me some things. Um, I love those types of readings. I love those readings where I ask you, what's your question? And you ask me and we just flow from there. Like I've had a lot of those, but I've had, I have had a few that were inaccurate. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> mm. How, um, I forgot the, um, I was just thinking about something. Um, how about uh, when I was just playing like new age music? Does it help to play like certain kinds of music that would like maybe raise the spirit level or anything like that? Anytime you want to raise like a spirit level with like music, you would just play that type of music that you feel or that you know that person or that entity like. Um, for me, I follow my own spirit because I feel like the most high's mission for my life is for me to be who I, exactly who I am. I'm an old soul, so I'm going to put on some Denise Williams, some Luther Vandross, <laughs> and we're going to rock out. Some Phyllis Hyman, you know, and mm -hmm. I cook for my ancestors. And when I know I'm making something that they really like, I put it on my altar. Um, if I would need something from them or I want them to really make something plain for me, then I'll put something on the altar that I know they like. So I just feel like that's a universal law when dealing with spirit. Like if it's a certain type of energy you want to come through, you will want to offer that energy something. That's just how I feel. Because if somebody does something for me, or I'm, if I'm doing something for somebody, there's an energy exchange. Nothing should ever be one-sided. It should always be reciprocity. Mm -hmm. is, um, do you think this is something that all of us, or let's say, every human or maybe just every melanated human is actually born with, but they just have to learn how to bring it out? Or do you think something that we have to learn or just some people can do it and others can't? I honestly think everybody can do it. Mm -hmm. 
but it's so subtle. Like, I think that a lot of times people are doing it and just don't know what it is. Because for me, it literally took me to be like, okay. as crazy as this sounds, this is what I feel. And then the person is like, oh my God, that's exactly what's going on. But that only came from me finding strength in my uniqueness, my ability to stand alone. And I uh -huh. feel like that's the same thing with everybody. Once you build up your confidence and you become confident in who you are, if that's something that you want to do and that's what's in your heart, you're it's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's because I remember um, a while ago, I was actually looking for, it was, it was a couple things, two, three main things, but two escapes me. I don't know why it escapes me, but one main thing, I probably think of them, you know, if we, I might think of them before we end. But one main thing, right? I was uh, I was looking for a job, and mm -hmm. it was a dude name was Mr. Gallon. He owned a restaurant, and the night before, I went to this restaurant to ask, you know, to talk to him about this job. I saw a dude. I had a dream about a dude cutting meat on a bandsaw. You know, a bandsaw, and um, like that they slice the meat on. It, it, it's it's like it's like the table. And then it's a thin blade that go up and oh, up and down and move. And you just push the got meat it. through it. Yeah. And um, it was a man slicing meat on a bandsaw. And and I had this dream. And I'm like, you know, I ain't think nothing of it. So when I woke up the next morning, you know, I went out and I was looking around. I was trying to find a job. <clears throat> so I said, I'm going to try Mr. Gallon. So I went and started talking to him. And he took me in the back. And lo and behold, it was a man in the back cutting meat on a bandsaw. And and I was like, well, wait a minute. It could this just be a coincidence? I mean, you know, I I'm I, you know, I'm the type of person I'm actually thinking on this. And um, but it, it was something else. It was something else that happened that I had two things, major things that happened. I had a dream the night before I actually seen it. And um mm -hmm. so so th th this is just me. I started wondering, oh, maybe I got something. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to figure out how to enhance this because I hear some people say, uh, like you know, you, some of the TV shows. I don't want this power, man. I'm scared of this. I want it all. <laughs> I want to be able to do it. It hasn't been an, a scary experience for me. Mm. Not with the ancestors. I have had scary experiences, but those were with like other entities, never like with the ancestors. What, like, like what? I, like, I don't really know what they were, but I've seen, like, when I was younger, I would talk to them, and they would tell me that they were, like, trying to hurt my mom or, like, different things like that, and I would, like, tell them, like, leave my mom alone. I would be talking out loud. My mom, you know, she thought about getting me evaluated and things like that, but she kind of let it go and saw where things went. But um, more recently, I saw what looked to be, like, a lemur. That's the word that spirit gave me when I saw the things. Uh -huh. um, but I was talking to a friend of mine who's like spiritual and she was telling me some stuff that she saw going on in my life. And when she said a particular word, I turned around and this thing jumped from one side of my living room to the other side of my living room. And it was like a shadow figure, like a lemur. Mm. Um, I feel spirits around me all the time. and don't necessarily know who they are, but I feel them like I'll know it's a man, I'll know it's a little boy, I'll know it's an old lady, but I won't know who they are. And I also see shadow people like all the time. <laughs> shadow people. And those are the ones that are annoying. Yeah, so it's like you see that shadow out the corner of your eye, but you know how give me one second, excuse me. Okay. Yes, babe. I'm still doing an interview, babe. Oh. <laughs> Um, it's like you know how you can feel someone standing there, so yeah. you'll see the shadow and you'll feel that it's a person, but when you look over, it vanishes. I felt that I was uh, uh, many times, and not mm -hmm. maybe a couple of days ago. I'm walking down the street, and I know I heard somebody walking in back. Me. I could hear it, and I turn around, and nobody there, and I'm just, I'm like, yeah, something going on here. So you know, I'm walking. And then you know you don't feel it no more. But um I um one of the uh 
experiences my mom told me about when she was a little girl. She said that it was a house. Where, uh, I don't think she ever went in there, but it was a house where all the children used to say, uh, and different people used to say that it was something in his house. If you go in his house and you open up this closet door, something stands up. And she said that my dad, my dad, right, he um, he was like, come on, man, that's a bunch of bull. That, that's a bunch of garbage, man. It, ain't nothing like that going on. They're like, why don't you go in there and find out? So they said later on, he went in the house. He said, I'm going to go here and I'm going to prove this. They said he went inside this house and he opened up the door where they said, I think it was like the second floor. They told him where to go, open up the closet. So he opened up the closet door and something, he says, he came out the house screaming. And he said he never went back in that house again. <laughs> Cause they say it's something that, so 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 I'm like so I'm I'm thinking that when when some of us pass, have you ever got any indication that some of us just walk around like 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 you know when, when you see the people out there talking to themselves on the corner and oh that's like the hands yeah that's like, not crazy no like that's another stigma that like it burns me to my core they diagnose people with like all of these disorders or all of these like mental quote unquote illnesses but actually those people are just very sensitive to spirits and for me like i said i get really anxious like i go through periods where i want to clean everything in my house all the time and i'm just running around and my husband is like sit down and then i go through times where i don't want to do anything mm -hmm. and i mean these are patterns this is normal because i go through times where i'm reading 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 all the time and then I go through times where I need to rest and replenish myself. But it took me to learn through bumping my head a billion times to figure out what was going on. The anxiety is nothing but me feeling all of this energy from all of these different places. Even while we were on the phone tonight, I could feel certain energies. That's why I had to light my, my Palo Santo because it's like sage. It, it cleanses the air. Okay. Because um, when you're dealing with these things, you don't know what's attached to people. I had a friend of mine who was very spiritual. Um, he actually had a dream. I had never been to his mom's uh, house, and he had a dream. And he, as he was telling me about the dream, I basically stopped him and finished the dream. Described mm. how the room looked and everything, and he's like, how did you know that? And then me and him also heard a spirit speaking as well together, and it was like, you know, so... Those things exist, and there are definitely beings outside of just the ancestors and just um, mm. people who were once human, like you said, that house where, where the guy ran out, um, this might be a series that we need to start because when I was a little girl, like my block that I grew up on, we were all close knit. So we were all playing in my girlfriend's basement. I might've been seven years old. And at the same time, we all stopped in our tracks, looked at the back of the basement and it were, it was eyeballs like the size of a golf ball, maybe a little bit bigger than a golf ball. Big. All neon green cat eyes, but they were neon green. It was no white. The whole eye was green. And nobody said anything. We just immediately ran up the steps one by one. And it's like we never talked about it after that. <laughs> like, this wasn't like something that everybody remember this. It's like we were so scared. It was years before I even mentioned it to anybody. I was grown. <laughs> you don't think it was a, you, you didn't have a cat. See, a cat has small eyes. A cat's eyes is like maybe yeah, the size yeah. of a quarter, if that. Yeah, yeah. This thing was like bigger than a golf ball. It was mm. like bigger than a golf ball. And it was the whole eyeball was green. It wasn't the pupil that was green. The whole, and it was no white. And it was like, it wasn't just on one level. It was like all over in this little, because she had like a, a, the back of the basement was really, really dark. So uh -huh. that's where it was. And it was like just bouncing around in the darkness. I, I, I asked you that on purpose because anybody in the future that might run across the video might say, oh, come on, man. It wasn't nothing but a cat eyes glowing in the dark. So I, so I asked that's you. That's why I'm glad you asked me. I'm glad you asked me. I am. <laughs> I, but, I, mean, I, I don't gain anything. For people who want to be like uh, Debbie Downers, like I don't gain anything from making stuff up. Like... I can't uh -huh. tell anybody how to access this power, right? this gift. All I can say is you have to trust yourself. It has to be something that's in your heart because it has to be part of your mission. We're all here to do different things. Mm. My husband is highly in tune as well, but his gifts 
work differently from ours. Our gifts are very complementary to each other, um, which goes to show me again that it's all about masculine and feminine balance and restoring those values. Like every myth, every movie, the plot is always light versus darkness. Mm -hmm. Light versus darkness. When the light is made, in my experience and through my learning, my that's all I can go by is my life experience. The light represents masculine energy and the darkness represents feminine energy. So you were right in saying mm -hmm. you think that the most high is because I'm sorry. That's what I once believed that as well. But it was like something had to come before darkness. Like nothingness is not darkness. Everything and nothingness, Alpha and Omega, that's not darkness. Darkness is a piece of it. Just like light is a piece of it. Because what is darkness without light? Darkness is nothing. Mm -hmm. So for me, the most high is both of those things coming together. And like the Bible teaches, because um I put all of this together through something the most high was like dealing with me with. And it was like um it's a scripture in the Bible that talks about we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities in both high and low places. And it talks about being three heavens. There's a where we are, then it's the second heaven, then it's the third heaven. And when the Most High broke it down to me, like before it split into masculine and feminine, it was the Most High. So that's what we would be on the third heaven. And then in the second heaven is where it split and you get um, masculine and feminine. And if we believe as above, so below, as it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth, then that would mean if man and woman can't get along here, then that's because their masculine and their feminine principle haven't, principle haven't learned how to merge in the second heaven, where there's all the war and the fighting going on, where the ancestors mm -hmm. can go because now they're not in a physical body, so they're not confined under the firmament. This mm -hmm. is just everything that, you know, comes to me and how it all has meshed together. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. But he, um, what about, I was going to ask you something around that. Well, what about uh, spirits and other, like, dimensions? What do you think about, like, other dimensions, like a black hole? Like, I don't know about a black hole, but, you know. I understand what you're asking me. I feel like if the goal is to reach nirvana, you're not going to get it right on the first time, like. I know I'm an old soul. I know I've been here before, but I feel like I still struggle to get simple universal principles. So I don't know if this is going to be my last time going around, but um, I feel like the, the dimensions are based off of where you have paid your karma off. Like if you have a very light heart, you might go to the ninth dimension. Like who knows how many dimensions it is? You know, you might go to a higher dimension, but if you were murder and you are stuck in a place of like my soul doesn't have breath you might be in a lower dimension because you need you're still holding on to phys like emotions because that's mm -hmm. our problem as humans we get caught in our emotions so if you're a spirit and you're still getting caught in your emotion then that means that you need to elevate and work some karma off which is why they communicate with us to guide us so that as they're helping us to achieve our mission and work our karma off, they're also growing too. That that makes me think. That makes me think too. I was all, the the same brother I was talking to earlier about the um about I don't even remember. But anyway, um we was talking about I was I was mentioning to him about when if somebody getting like murdered suddenly and the possibility of them like not even knowing that they did or realizing it. And or, or like like you was t saying the other day about being in shock, I was wondering, do you think any possibility that a person that's stuck in a limbo type state of being shot, you know, of being murdered okay. quick, and then a person like me pass from this body, and you know, I like I I, I leave that I guess what they what they perceive as natural causes or something like that, or I, I know I'm on my way out, could I go out and save that person? What do you think? You mean that could your spirit save that person? Or like your actual physical? What, I don't understand what you're asking me. Uh, like, um, 
Uh, the, the, that's per, that person's soul was stuck in limbo. Mm -hmm. And his, his, his essence, his or her essence, you know what I'm talking about, her essence, stuck in limbo. Mm -hmm. And I passed from this body. Do you think it would be possible for me to find that person and save them oh, out of this Oh, definitely. Definitely, because if that's what's in your energy, then y'all are naturally going to go to each other. True love mm. is unconditional, and it, it never dies. And if that's what's in your heart, then it's there for a reason. And I just mm. feel like you will meet that person every lifetime. <laughs> you know, um, but what, what about the mind? It, it, some people say your mind, um, and, and this is leading up to a question right after. Some people say your mind uh, um, creates your reality. So you think, so some people say, but do, do you think, like, some people believe that when you pass from here, you might end up in another place and continue on there. And whether you realize it or don't realize it, but the people that's here is crying, getting ready for your funeral while you're continuing on in like a parallel type place. Well, right. in that essence, I feel like while we're sitting right here and while we're alive, we exist in parallel universes. Like it's probably a thousand or more or however many beings that look like me existing on other realms. Mm. Um, so I don't think that has anything to do with being alive or not in this realm. Um, mm. What I will say is I don't agree with that because I feel mm. like maybe not for people who have like mastered the universal principles and they have like a really light heart, maybe they'll go to a higher dimension. But for the majority of the people that I know that are in like the lower dimensions, um, I'm sorry, spirit be talking to me while I'm talking. I'm trying to stay on track with what I was about to say. <laughs> oh God, this is the second time I did that. Y'all embarrassing me on camera. What was? Do you remember what I was saying? Um, we was talking about like a parallel dimension. Oh, so I feel like the whole funeral part, I feel like that is part of them understanding death and working off that karma. Unless mm -hmm. they are one of those people that have traveled, that, that transcend to a higher dimension. Mm -hmm. Now, now, now this, this is the question that sort of, that sort of led up to that I was thinking on that. Um, and th this is something that I would actually like to have. In fact, my, my, uh, my, my niece and goddaughter and I, we was walking down the street one day and she pretty much she she knows what I'm about. She she's about she she's 12 now, but she was 11. Like this was last year, and we was talking about all different as many different scenarios as we could of what happens to a person when they leave here. And one of the scenarios that we ended up pointing out together is some people actually believe that what ha what has happened was happening now and was going to happen has already happened and it's happening again and over and over and over and it will continue to happen throughout eternity. Now, now, now let me, I would mm -hmm. love for that scenario to be a reality because if there's any way that I could come back around to this reality and just have the slightest hint of what, what's going to happen to Dawn. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm getting mm. at? I can I say see what you're saying. I feel like that is definitely true because I feel that past, present, and future all exist together at the same time. It's about those mm -hmm. parallel universes. But I also feel like in this 3D experience, um, with coming back around, you don't remember certain things. Like, if it's going to happen again, if that is true, that you, we just live the same thing over and over and over again. Well, you know what? Because this is the first time I'm thinking about that. That might actually be a possibility because if you're living it over and over again, that would mean that it would have to be different, a little slightly different each time. Or what would be the point in doing it over and over again? Yeah, because I'm looking at I'm looking at a lot of people. You know, what, what, what's the word? Um, what, what what's deja vu? A lot because mm -hmm. I was the same brother. I was just I got so much from this brother. When I was talking to him today. Now, um, mm -hmm. we were just talking about um. He, he was like. Because I know, I've seen, and I've been some places, and I know I've been there before. And can't mm -hmm. nobody tell me. I just know I've been there before. Like, like, um, and, 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 um, and I experienced that before, and so on and so forth. For me, myself, I've been looking at certain TV shows. I'm like, 
I've seen this TV show before. And then I think we was talking about the Star Wars thing. Um, mm -hmm. Luke, I am my father. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mm -hmm. boy, Brother Polite. You heard of Brother Polite. Mm -hmm. he, he, was, he was talking about it. I suppose we interviewed him, but we never got to it. But um, mm -hmm. um, he we, he was talking about how they changed that up. And like like just what are you, like your overall thoughts on on uh on that like that's uh, a big question. Huh? That's a big question. <laughs> I like I said, I'm a person that I believe a little bit of everything. I've experienced UFOs, I've experienced a lot of wow. um, unexplainable things. I've been taken up by like if there's just been a lot that I've in dreams, I've been taken up by aliens quote unquote they didn't look like aliens it wasn't like a scary experience so I believe in different things so yes I do believe in time travel yes I do believe that the elitists are trying to control the masses through any means necessary I do believe that they have the ancient sciences and all of those things which is how they're able to do things the way that they do them I do believe that media has a major effect and all of that with the rituals and things and the symbols that they 